where you will end up five years from now. And you say, well, why would that be? Because birds of a feather flock together? It's because in order for you to rise up to higher levels of capability that you have, you must associate with people that have already gone to where you may need to go. And if you don't associate with people like that, you don't know any better because it's kind of like the same old, same old. So, well, I'm just going to tell you a little quick uh, bio on me and my background. So I was a medical doctor, as, uh, as Glenn said. I've been retired from medicine. It's hard to believe. I don't usually say it too often because people, people, people start adding up the numbers and say, oh, he's been retired for 25 years. What the heck does that mean? Is this, is this guy in his 80s yet or something like that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, great. So uh, the director's talking to me right now, so I'll stay concentrated on you as much as I can with this direction. I feel like I'm in a studio environment here. Where, where's the, you know, okay, let's do it. So we're in the middle of it. So I uh, didn't have much time for a beta test. Apologize, by the way, for the lateness. Uh, LA traffic, I guess. And um, so any case, uh, my background is medical doctor. And the reason I was a medical doctor, because my why was, let me see if I can, is it okay to move this over here, director? Okay. Be careful that one. There, there, you, there you go, doctor. Okay, so I had a why, a big, big passion. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight, how to unleash within you your big why, finding your big why. So my why was to be a medical doctor. And, uh, you know, why was that? I don't know. Could have been my upbringing, just some kind of passion that came over me when I was a teenager, and that was my decision. So I worked extremely diligently to get the job done, get into medical school, become a doctor. And then along the way, I discovered I had other interests, other passions, and I also found I was caught in a trap. It was called get up, go to work, pay the bills. My trap was somebody kept moving the cheese. Insurance companies, Medicare, Medicaid, all of the people that own the gold, the golden rule, they were moving the cheese on me. And so I was feeling pressure. And so my solution was work harder, work longer, see more patients, build a bigger practice. And in the process of doing that, I had to hire more people. So we had worked our way up to 11 or 12 employees, $60,000 a month in overhead. And so that required seeing a lot of acne, PMS, and hemorrhoids. That means, my gosh, uh, it was 40 patients a day and 800 patients a month, and it ended up being, uh, you know, 10,000 patients a year. And then there were months where we couldn't collect enough money to pay the bills. So in other words, <laughs> the overhead was 60,000. We had to make sure the employees got paid, all the other bills got paid, but how are we going to get paid? So we got paid with a line of credit. And so I began to realize, you know, I need to start thinking about some other things to do because I looked at doctors that were 20 years older than me struggling just like I was struggling and trying to figure it all out. And something quite profound happened within a period of about three or four years. Four or five doctors that I work with had major health problems that happened to them and uh, caused them to be economically severely tried because of that. They had tremendous trials. And I thought, maybe I should think about what my grandfather told me, my adopted grandfather named Babe Steinberg. Now, Babe Steinberg was my, my buddy's uh, granddad, Jewish family that was a serial entrepreneur, had made all kinds of money in the real estate market and, and in the retail market, et cetera, owned a bunch of companies. And so he made millions, lost millions, made millions, lost millions. So he used to tutor Robin and I at 14 and 15 years of age and say, hey, guys, uh, if you listen to granddad, babe, we're going to show you how to create enough ongoing income. We can make money while you sleep instead of having to work every day to earn your keep. So Robin went to be a CPA. I want to be the doctor. And he warned us. He said, guys, you're going to make just enough money to look like you're affluent. In other words, you can buy stuff on time and have this credit and so forth. And he says, just remember, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and the middle class keeps spending. He said, you're going to be one of those people. And by the time you're 65 or 70 years of age, you're going to wonder, will I have enough money to sustain me through my later years? It's one thing to be somebody, a 20-something and couch surf. It's another thing to be 80-something or 70-something and couch surf. That ain't a good deal. Having not enough money as you get older is not a pretty good deal. So uh, he taught us the idea of developing business systems. So let me, let me do this here and, 
and draw a quick diagram of what today we hear about by an author named Robert Kiyosaki that wrote the book Business of the 21st Century. And if you go to chapter four, it's called Core Financial Values. And most people don't really know what their core financial values are. They just realize I was making this much money and I was spending more than I was making. Now I'm making this much money, I'm still spending more than I'm making. Now I'm making this much money, I'm still spending more than I'm making. How is that possible? Well, there are certain core financial values that Kiyosaki talks about in terms of what quadrant you're in when it comes to making money. And he talks about the E for employee, which means you are a time dependent worker working for somebody else's dream, sacrificing, spending your time and energy towards somebody else's business, which, which was their dream, and trying to get ahead economically, serving their dream. And then there's the S quadrant, which what I was as a doctor, Kiyosaki calls it self-employed, solopreneur, or psycho business. And so I was time dependent there based on how many patients I could see, how many procedures I could do, and so forth and so on. And the overhead, like I told you, you got to be Brutal. And then he talks about the B quadrant, which is a business system that provides you economic liberty in the fashion of ongoing income. Money that rolls in, whether you're sleeping or working or traveling. And we're going to talk about what it means to be a digital nomad tonight. How in today's marketplace, you can become a digital nomad. So um, those of you in the virtual audience, uh, our director over here is going to bring up a slide of the circle Y, and around y, the Y, the circle Y is going to be then the how, and then beyond that will be the what. That's the first slide that we're going to refer to. And so I'm going to, in a few minutes, explain to you how to work with the what and the how in the B quadrant so that you can create economic liberty. And then economic liberty. Well, then, as Kiyosaki talks about, take you to the I quadrant, the investment quadrant, where then you can have assets working for you that create ongoing income. So the B quadrant, I quadrant thinking, that core value is critical. So my encouragement to you, if you've never read this book, read Business of the 21st Century, simple read, straightforward, written at a sixth grade level, you say, what good's a sixth grade level? Oh, you want to read a PhD level economics book? Try reading that. Uh, I don't know all that stuff. I just know that the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, the middle class keeps spending. And if I could find a way to work with the middle class that keeps spending and then the not so middle class, the poor that keeps spending because they're getting money somewhere, you know, whether it happens to be from entitlements or whatever or, or uh, you know, being on some kind of government payments and then the wealthier are spending money. So how can we be involved in that that route of economics where money is being spent and we could be the intermediary. So um, what I'm gonna do is have Brandon take us to slide number two. And in slide number two, we're gonna refer to three intersecting circles. And by the way, in that first, the um, concentric circles, I would encourage you to go to TED Talks, Simon Sinek, it starts with why. This is an 18-minute talk that is so riveting, so elucidating, so powerful. If you would watch that once a week for a month and then once a month for four months, it'll change your economic DNA. Highly encourage that. One other thing I'd recommend from a TED Talk is by a wonderful lady, uh, coach, uh, motivator, inspirational speaker named Mel Robbins. And Mel Robbins on a TED Talk her talk is how to stop screwing yourself up, up or over. How to stop screwing yourself over. You listen to this 20-minute talk, you will laugh, you'll split a gut, and you'll go, wow, I'm doing exactly what she said. I'm making some mistakes. It may be your aha moment. I hope so. So how to stop screwing yourself up again, a TED Talk by uh, Mel Robbins. So what we're going to talk about now is these intersecting circles representing where our economy is today. We're talking about the sweet spot. So one of our circles is going to be the digital economy, which today, the internet as we know it, is unlimited in its scope on planet Earth as to how many people 
it can reach, how many people can be online, how many people can be involved in commerce, shopping, et cetera, and businesses. And then the distribution economy. And the distribution economy is how does stuff get into the hands of the consumer? And then the third one is going to be the network economy. How do you build a network of consumers or business partners or stores or suppliers all tied together between distribution, digital, and, and network, and the intersecting point is what we call the U economy. The U economy. Now, what I'd encourage you to do, Google Mel Robbins, the U economy. She has a two-minute audio, video, rather, that explains what the U economy is in a brilliant fashion, and if you'll watch that video and add to what you're learning from me tonight, then you'll begin to realize that it means you can be a solopreneur, you can be a digital nomad, you can operate anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, and do business. My son is an example, being a producer of music, he is a digital nomad. When he's down in Cabo uh, at the beautiful Casa Haven, uh, Cielo uh, Azul, I think it is, or Cielo Azul, the blue heaven that we, we call it, um, he's going to have his miniature little uh, deck there, and he can make music with his his girlfriend while he's down there, and he could do that. He's done it in Paris, he's done it in Prague, he's done it anywhere in the world he wants to, and our daughter can do the same thing. She can go where she needs to go, wants to go with her particular skill set. But I'm going to take it a step further. I want you to think about being a digital nomad, yet not have to clock in, clock out eight hours a day like some people are. Yes, they have the flexibility to move around, but they still got to clock in every day and put in several hours. How about clocking in when you want to, clock out when you want to, and have lots of flexibility and freedom? So the U economy is what we're going to concentrate on with you tonight, the U economy. Now, getting back to the power of why one more time. Um, the question becomes is if time and money were no object, how would you live? Not, this is what I do for a living, but how about pivoting from, this is what I do for a living, this is who I am, to this is how I want to live. How do you want to live your life? Think about how short our stay is on planet Earth. I just heard somebody today say it on a podcast, 30,000 days or something like that, or you know, it could be 35,000 days. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's that long, and there's so much to do, so much to see, so much to experience, but there's just not enough time in a lifetime to do it when you're constantly working towards something that requires you being there all the time just to make a living, just to make money, just to pay the bills. So we're going to talk about how to accelerate that process to create freedom in your life. So when you think of the power of why, there's another thing to think about. Like this particular device here, Obviously, Apple and Steve Jobs and his entire team and Wozniak, et cetera. Well, these guys had a concept similar to a guy named Wayne Gretzky, the great hockey, great, great hockey guy that was from Canada, a Canadian boy like me from the land of the frozen chosen plan. Shoot the puck in the net, skate down the ice uh, side by each, huh? And the uh, A, excuse me, A. <laughs> so it's Canadian speak, <laughs> French Canadian. Anyhow, um, Gretzky said, I skate to where the puck is going to be, not to where the puck is, but where the puck is going to be. Well, here's what Jobs and other people like him did. They said, I'm going to create a product where the consumer will need to be, and they don't even, need, they don't even know it now, but I'll create the product, and then they'll realize that's where I need to be. And that's the beauty of what he did, and he realized that he could help to revolutionize the world. And he was passionate about it. He knew there'd be plenty of money to make at it. The guy was worth you know, mega, 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 mega billions. So just like our son, Johnny, he knows that he's passionate about music, but he's also got financial goals of freedom. He wants to live in Malibu and produce music there and, and kind of hang out and put a big studio together and have artists come in and do fun things with them. But he doesn't want to have to do it nose to grindstone all the time. And so he realizes by creating the right music and plugging into the right kind of royalties and placements with contracts and, and licensing, et cetera, there'll be plenty of ongoing income to come along with it. So we're going to work along those lines with you tonight. So the question becomes is, what is your why? And number two is, what's the why of what we do, what you're hearing about tonight? ILD is a training, motivation, coaching, business school organization that teaches people how to get the right economic DNA, knowledge, skill set, 
and associate with other people that are moving to where you want to move to in life and discover your why and indeed equip you to go out into the world and take your life, control your life to live it on your terms. So that's really our why. And based on that kind of a why, there's passion in it. There's also serving other people. It's called a hand. We give people a, a hand up or instead of a hand down. In other words, not, not a hand out, but a, uh, uh, we, we give people a hand pulling them up as opposed to giving them a handout. We teach them how to fish for a lifetime. Okay, so the next slide that um, this gentleman is going to bring up for you that are in the virtual audience, I believe it is a slide of the trillion dollar digital shift. Am I correct, direct, director? Thank you. So what you're going to see uh, for those of you in the virtual audience and for those of you in the live audience here tonight, you're going to see a document that looks like this. This is in digital and paper form. And this document basically represents, if you look at it carefully, uh, it represents the ability through internet connections to reach the entire globe through some form of internet connection, whether it be LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram, however people tend to relate with each other, it becomes a global phenomenon. Now, when I was initially looking to diversify years ago, the internet was not spoken of. It was kind of like top secret, yet it operated in the 60s, 1968, maybe early 60s. They already had it for military purposes. I had read some books on futuristic thinking, and when I was involved in the original catalog distribution system, when that market was going like crazy like this, I had a vision that one day, what we're doing in marketing will coincide together with the digital revolution, the network revolution, and the, and the distribution revolution, and create the ultimate you economy idea. And this is what you're beginning to see. We're involved in 100 countries around the world, 136 languages. Tonight, or last night, for sure, I know there's people in Japan watching this meeting, and I don't know who's doing the translating, but somebody was doing it, and people in China and the people in the Philippines, all over the place. So we have the capability with just simple technology that you can put in your pocket and we can reach people anywhere. The other day I was with uh, a young lady named Carly. She has this phenomenal lady from the Philippines uh, named Mary Jane that she brought over to our home in Seattle. And we began to talk about the power of a dream, the power of a vision. And she told us about her work efforts, 90 hours a week, working for a big operation called Goodwill. And the reason she works 90 hours a week is they can't find another person that can do what she's capable of doing, and so she can't say no. So she just keeps working more, and finally she's up to 90 hours a week. And I said, so Mary, what's your motivation to be here tonight to chat with April and I and to be uh, developing an alliance with Carly? She said, I want to be free. I want to be free. And it was just plain and simple. I said, if you want to be free, I'm going to help you out right now. I got on my phone. I went on Messenger Video. I dialed up a man named Robert Houghton, who lives in Minnesota, that began his Philippine business through Philippine chat rooms out of Minnesota, into the Philippines, into Korea, into Vietnam, and began to develop business alliances with people through that particular venue, that networking digital network, and now twice a year goes to the Philippines, expands business, and, and builds it all over the Philippines as an entire network over there. And so Mary, April and I sat back and ate popcorn and drank drinks, energy drinks, and Carly sat over there eating a bar while Robert and Mary Jane from the Philippines had a 45-minute conversation about the power of a vision, the power of a dream, and how to build this business in the Philippines. And now he's come back from the Philippines, already got her network growing and going in the Philippines. Pretty exciting what technology can do. When you go to the center of this diagram, you're going to see different forms of distribution. I'll just kind of read this because you're obviously, uh, you know, you can see it on the big screen there. And so think about this. When you think of Walmart, the largest distributor, thank you, Glenn, the largest distributor of um, products through a big box store in the world. We don't need to speak about that other than big, 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 very successful company, big box store. Stock it, stack it deeper, sell it cheaper. Then you think of Oracle, Microsoft, and IBM, and Google. Those electronic companies 
are the backbone of making the efficiencies of these businesses run. And if you look at a company like Google as an example, I mean, the, the big ones are today, I think they're, they're calling, saying Apple, Google, Facebook, and, uh, and uh, Amazon. I mean, the government guys are talking about, oh, they're monopolies, we need to bust them up and all that. I'm not here to talk about that. You know, I don't have any thoughts on it one way or the other. All I know is they've reached an awful lot of people with what they do. And Google is about 10 times more profitable than the entire American airlines industry. And they run a, fr a fraction of the volume because their overhead is so low compared to the airline industry. And then you go on to companies like eBay, you know, auction, online site, Costco, huge warehouse operation also started in Seattle. And then, of course, Amazon. I mean, look, Amazon would have failed if it hadn't been for timing. When the dot-com bubble burst and the NASDAQ collapsed a month or three weeks before that happened, Amazon raised through the, the market, stock market, $380 million. They raised it actually through private investors, $380 million. And if that hadn't happened a month later, you would never even hear of Amazon today at all. Pretty amazing process. Amazon Go, walk in the store with your phone, scan it, put all your products in a bag and walk out. Amazon Fresh. Want your vegetables and your steak and whatever else you want delivered right to the door. Amazon Prime delivered within, you know, sometimes a cup, an hour or two. Pretty amazing thing. Um, and then Alibaba, another huge concern out of China. And then another one that's really quite interesting, and I, as I see as an emerging giant, to be honest with you, as I look in the spectrum of the horizon and towards the future, you know, Amway today is the largest seller of health and beauty products on the entire internet. That's been for 10 years now through Internet uh, Retailer Magazine, and they're the number one direct selling company on the entire planet. Their profitability, if you compare it to other big giants like Amazon, is massive because the overhead structure is so low, and they paid out, from my, from my research, they paid out four to five to six billion a year to people that are running independent businesses that are affiliated with them as a supplier and have paid out close to 60 billion in bonuses. So a pretty amazing operation. I would encourage you to keep your eyes on the horizon in the future, not just for Amazon or Alibaba, but for Amway also. It's going to be pretty amazing. Now, the other side, which is page two of what uh, this document is that, excuse me, that Mr. Uh, Mr. Director there is going to show you is going to be kind of a, a very quick sketch of a business overview. And what you see in this diagram here in the upper right-hand corner is the power of a dream based on what are the needs for you and your family for the future, but your income and your limitations of that income, what does that really do for you? So my encouragement to you is expand the creative imagination of the landscape of your brain to see a bigger picture, to see bigger possibilities. I'm a big believer, if you'll identify a big why that you can begin to feel passionate about, and you read a book like Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and The Master uh, Magic of Thinking Big by Dr. David Schwartz, these are things I've taught my children, ladies and gentlemen, that you will begin to, inside of you, through your reticular activating system of your brain, attract people to you that'll come to you in your life and circumstances that will open up not only your mind gate, but the possibility gate of opening doors for a bigger, brighter future. And all the pieces of the puzzle begin to come together, provided you believe and provided you're taking intentional steps towards the success. So what we're gonna talk about on this simple diagram is, for most of us, what do we want? Extra time and flexibility, extra income to fit our dreams, shrink your dreams to fit your income? I don't think so. If that's what you want to do, I'm going to recommend Glenn order you up a whole bunch of books called How to Live on Less and Love It More. Mr. Dickinson would be more than happy to have a book burning party over that one, I'll guarantee you. I've, I've met people that were reading that book when they first met me or somebody that I've worked with and affiliated with, and uh, when we got rid of that book and got them thinking you're rich, they were on their way. Prepare for long-term, for ongoing income to create a financial freedom in your life. So you say, well, David, how did you develop enough of an economic war chest so that at 35 years of age, you could then 
have the option position to retire from medicine, which I chose to do about three or four years later, Glenn. Were you at that retirement party with the helicopters? And we, we, we had a six mile motorcade throughout Seattle, the Washington State Patrol, the Bellevue Police, the Seattle Police, the whole place was a, a dang mess. I mean, they had to reroute traffic through the I-90 and all kinds of crazy things. So <laughs> that was quite a party. So any case, let's, let's, now let's zero in. Let's give you a thumbnail, this zero in. When you go and shop at a store, you take your money, you get your product. With what we teach and we do, we teach you go to your own store and come back with more. Not just product, but with high quality name brand private label product that you can't buy anywhere else. You come back with a product and get more for your money with the product, with pricing and quality, et cetera, and come back with money in your pocket. Very, very powerful. So what I'm gonna show you next is something I usually sketch out on the lower half of this diagram, this blank paper rather, called the napkin plan or the two to five year plan. So an example, if I were sitting, if I was on a golf cart and some guy's having a discussion with me about business and he wants some ideas, I could literally write on the hood of the golf cart with a napkin, write out a simple business plan that would be intriguing and interesting to that guy. The um, other day, two days ago, I had a guy that came by our home to fix our garage doors that were kind of rattling. And he came in there and he took a look around and saw some nice cars, you know, saw a car that was covered up with a nice cover on. He says, what the heck's that? I said, that's my wife's grocery cart. He said, what kind? He says, I said, it's a Bentley. He says, oh my gosh. He says, what do you do? I said, I said, I'll tell you what I do. I do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it. He says, how do I find out how to do that? I said, well, we'll talk about it. So I sent him a uh, link to, it starts with Y by Simon Sinek. And I said, sent him a link to the other one by Mel Robbins about how to stop screwing your head up. And then I'm going to send him IamLivingFree.com. I am living free. Dot com. So, in any case, um, this next slide is, is a napkin presentation. It's simple, straightforward. So, what Mr. Rogers, the director, is going to show us right now is going to be a picture of, let's say, that you start your own business. You have now become equipped all the infrastructure, all the back end of this is already handled, how to do it, just like when I start April's car or one of our cars, I don't worry about what's under the hood, I just know, hey, it starts, let's drive it. I don't worry about the innards of the iPhone, let's just use it. So we have all of the back end distribution in place, and what we're gonna do is work with you and show you how to develop 7,500 in uh, product volume in a month, 7,500, and that's gonna net you somewhere between 55,000 to $190,000 a year with that kind of volume. And then the next, the next step of what we're going to do is, the director is telling me to move this down, Glenn, so I'll just put that a little lower. Are we okay? Okay, thank you, director. Appreciate that. Um, and so, while we're at it, why don't I just relax? How's that sound? I'm, I'm going to relax just a little bit. Okay, while we're at it, I'm going to untuck and relax just a, little, <laughs> just a little bit. This is California, isn't it? Yeah. Is it okay to untuck? Yes. Okay, so here we go. Now, I want you to think about the power of expanding outlets. Uh, okay, you can have 10 7-Elevens, you can have 20 7-Elevens, you can have five, five Burger, Burger Kings, you can have all kinds of different stuff that, you know, sell hamburgers, sell fast food, sell, you know, convenience uh, store products, etc. And so, the director is telling me to talk more quiet. So I'm going to go to a whisper, Susan. <laughs> okay. If I whisper, can I put this up high enough? I'm going to whisper to you right now. Okay. There we go. So thank you, director. So let's say you go one, two, three. We identify some people that we're going to partner with. You know, you meet some people, you talk to some people about some ideas, and they, they're, you're like-minded. You're looking for like-minded people that you can work with potentially. No matter what kind of business opportunity you're going to put together or business you're going to build, you want some capable, like-minded people. And more than anything, you want people that are ambitious, that know what they want out of life. So uh, let's say we develop three of these that each do this, develop this 7,500 in product volume in a month or above. And now at that point in time, 
you haven't run an income but 130 to $819,000 a year. Now, those kinds of numbers for some people are just out of range mentally, economically, emotionally, or whatever. But for some people, those numbers are, yeah, I like that. I remember I met uh, one of my coaches years ago, and uh, this is quite a few years ago. I was in my 20s. And he said, uh, unless you make 60000 bucks a month, you ain't got nothing to tell me about how to make money. And I'm going, legal, illegal, who cares? I mean, I was excited about the prospect. And so you know, he, he helped, helped me get to that level. Now, let's go say we develop another four, five, six of these outlets. And we have, obviously, there's no limit on what it can be. It's not like we're saying, oh, you got to do three, you got to do six. Hey, you're confined by this kind of design or whatever. No, it's unlimited what you could do. And with that particular six, equals about 550000 to $2.9 million a year. So very, very significant incomes. But the beauty of it is this. You saw me drinking a ice-cold, um, healthy, functional energy drink alternative to other stuff that has a bunch of sugar in it in the marketplace. So we handle about 10 million products because we have business alliances and partnerships based on that graphic I had originally showed you with big, big name brand stores that are looking to increase their digital footprint without having to open up more stores. They know we do a digital footprint with a whole bunch of independent business owners. And so they want to do more volume because of what's happening with in-store marketing versus online marketing. So we have some product that is, I would call it healthy snack alternative. So I'm right now enjoying a healthy snack alternative, this particular citrus flavor beverage. And here's what's interesting. Let's say you ended up becoming a business partner and your grandmother, your aunt, your uncle, your brother, your sister, whatever, a few people you know, you know, or people you know from the gym, they kind of like the stuff you're drinking, you know, you give them a taste of it or you give them a can of it. They go, that's pretty cool. And so let's say you, I don't know, people would go to your website and they would order a grand total of 15 to 20 cases a month of the product. You don't have to warehouse it. You don't have to ship it. If there's a problem with it, you don't have to deal with the customer service. You don't have to collect the money. The money goes directly kind of, you know, what Venmo is and stuff like that. It goes directly. It's direct bill, direct ship and direct pay to you. Well, let's say you decided, hey man, I wanna take this to a higher level. And there's enough people that are purchasing this kind of product that they purchase 10,000 cases a month or 20,000 cases a month. It's just as easy for you to sell 10,000 cases as 10 cases. You don't have to be involved in the process. So uh, just kind of digest that a little bit as you're expanding your uh, creative landscape of your brain, thinking about economically how to have liberty in your life. Okay, so that's the napkin plan right there. Now, the next slide, um, Director, I believe, help me kind of refresh my memory a little bit, but if I'm not mistaken, I think it might be uh, the uh, revenue sharing shopping app. Is that correct? I've already done that. We're already gone to six. Um, and so go past the six, which, which takes up to 2.9 million a year. And now the one right after that is what, what's, what's the, uh, slide. Okay. So yes, the team approach the business. So thank you. This particular document is, um, approved legal, legal document. It's not like a subscription agreement, but when you go through this, you look at the numbers, you can analyze how the flow works and how the dollars are paid out. Very much worthwhile study. It's only eight pages long, and it's also digital. You can get a digital, get a paper copy. Highly encourage you to get a hold of this. Next slide, please, Director. Okay, now what we're going to talk about is something that I am so fired up about, so excited about, that um, I see potential in this beyond anything imaginable. Some of you have played a game called Candy Crush. Others play you know, Farmville or whatever it is that people like to play these little games. My grandmother, not my grandmother, my mother-in-law, is she's 90, and she drives, she takes care of our pit bull, she takes care of her own home, she's mentally highly alert, and she plays Candy Crush. And she loves her Candy Crush. Because she loves Candy Crush, my wife April has to love Candy Crush, so they can do 
kind of be in a candy crush group together. So fun, fun stuff to do. Imagine if you could put that fun element into a shopping app. And instead of virtual dollars, real dollars, you're going to shop anyhow. So we're going to go from 10 million products available through all of these vendors down to 100 products that are healthy snack alternatives. I mean, actually healthy to eat. And we're going to put them into three categories. Something you can drink, something you can munch on or chew, and something that has nutritional value in the form of nutritional supplementation. We represent what's called Neutralite, which is the number one selling vitamin on the entire planet. More than, more than anybody else sells, Neutralite sells the most. So what we're going to do on this Switch Share Duplicate app is we have postured this with obvious swipe technology, some artificial intelligence, and all of these listings of products that are in there. And what you can see in the diagram that the director is showing you is it says categories, what is it, how does it work. These are videos, one-minute video, five-minute video, and then register. So the categories is basically the calculator. It's sort of the revenue sharing part of it. You know, I call it I call it sort of the money, the money, the money app, the shopping app. And so right now I just ran into one of the developers on this app and it's being revamped right now to become more cool, more seamless, more fun, more interesting, more attractive to anybody that would put their hand to this. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is whoever is possibly coaching you or talking to you about this idea, get them to bring out their smart pad or their phone, bring up this app and just slide it over to you. And what I want you to do is this, out of a hundred products, pick three, three products that you could see yourself eating on a daily basis. I mean, there's different flavors and stuff like that. So you can switch up the flavors of beverages and flavors of bars and drinks and all that kind of stuff but about three products. Now watch this. Those three products are going to come in at the cash register at between five to six dollars a day. Now I want you to be honest with yourself. If I could attach a money app moneyometer in your pocket, so to speak, that every time you pulled out five dollars, every time you pulled out ten bucks, every time you put out a debit card or a credit card and you bought something, it would tabulate it through every day of the month. And I will promise you by the time the end of the month rolls around, if you really could look in the mirror at yourself and say, I can't believe I spent that much money buying that stuff, you'd begin to realize that it's easy to do. So I'm going to just use the example of, we call it anyway money, five to six dollars a day of anyway money. So watch carefully what we're going to, how we're going to do this. So again, let's say this is you and you have embarked on starting your business. You are using three products a day, and you develop one, two, three, four clients, friends at the gym, people you know from work, people you know from, you know, friends, relatives, what have you, neighbors, I don't know, just people you run into. You develop four clients that do the same three products a day. They pick out whatever three products they are. Based on pricing, it all comes out to about five, six bucks a day on these snack products, healthy snack products. With that interaction, if you take $5 times 30 days, and you can register this app where it gets slided up and down 20 days a month, 30 days a month, you know, 10 days a month, it could be six products, 10 products, 20 products, whatever you want it to be. It could be 10, 100 clients if you want it to be, I suppose. Uh, you're gonna, 30 times 60 is $180 in a month that you're already going to spend on stuff you're going to put in your mouth anyhow. So you're going to make somewhere between $150 to $200 a month because of this business enterprise, because of our compensation structure, and you're already spending that somewhere else. Now you're investing it in your own store, and because of this book right here, Prosumer Power by Dr. Bill Quain. He'll explain what does it mean to create profit by being a consumer, getting paid to buy from your own store. Uh, so you basically made between $150, $200, and you invested $180, you got the product, and you got the money back. Step one. Step two. 
Step two is let's develop one, two, three, four, five, six outlets with six associates, partnering with six associates, doing exactly the same thing. Now you're going to have an income between $800 to a thousand dollars a month. So somewhere around ten thousand dollars a month, and you got six people that are consuming their three products a day, you're consuming your three products a day. Each of them have four clients, you got four clients, all hypothetical. But remember, you can scale this up. The scope of this is unlimited. And then let's visualize. Let's say each of these six decides to develop one, two, three, four four other partnerships, alliances, associates that they're going to work with in this simple revenue sharing shopping app. And now your income is going to reach but $55,000 a year off of three products. I mean, it just seems almost like a fairy tale, almost like how is that possible until you do the math and you start to experience this and see what's happening. So um, again, take a look at this app with whoever invited you here tonight, wherever you happen to be, and just play with it and, and see what happens. The magic of the kinesthetic experience, you know, using, using your own finger, playing with this thing on the, on the uh, swipe technology. Okay, the next slide. I believe uh, director is going to be a young couple with two kids. Is that right? Okay, so what we're going to do very quickly, we're going to move through a uh, slide presentation of just examples of, of a few folks that are kind of in the millennial age range that have made some pretty cool things happen uh, in this. I don't have all of their names memorized without having the pictures in front of me, so I'm just going to kind of go from memory a little bit here. <laughs> Apparently, the director is going to be able to hand me yes. hand me the uh, thank you, director. I appreciate it. I feel like I'm on a talk show or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, this first couple, Megan Colby, Jacobs, they've been retired since she was 23, 24, he was 27. They're about 31 years of age today. Great couple. <clears throat> Whoops. Next one is a young, this is the most eligible single male in North America, Johnny Crow. And uh, here's a guy, 24 years of age, graduated in graphic design, got his first job working in a cubicle. A week later, his dad called him up at work, said, how's it going, son? He says, I can't believe it. I'm going to do this for 40 more years. He said, why don't you start a business with me and I'll coach you? And lo and behold, he did at 28. He retired from a regular job and now his business is booming. He's about 34 years of age. Next slide, please, director. This is a very cool slide. I was at what I would call a millionaire's convention in San Diego in December. And this was kind of a celebration event and a learning event and just associate networking together with these folks. This particular young couple, they're 27 years of age, just turned 27. And they started in their business career doing what we're talking about here at about 20 years of age. This is Nicholas and Stephanie Noe. And uh, they are in the category of having six uh, of these outlets with the income range that I showed you a few minutes ago. Pretty amazing couple to be free at 26, 27 years of age. Next uh, slide, please, uh, director. This particular couple are about 32 years of age, same situation, retire, rather get, graduates from college, meets his, uh, his girlfriend, his wife at college. She's a concert violinist. He was a history major. Now they're working 80 hour a week divorce. In other words, she's busy doing recitals and teaching people. He's busy working at men's warehouse, trying to find a job as a history teacher and uh, at an 80 hour a week divorce. His father needled him and needled him by sending him text messages every other day saying, son, I'm jet skiing today, I'm surfing today, I'm battle, battle boarding today. They live in Tampa, Florida. I'm out, uh, go slide back there for a second so I can see that again. So anyhow, this couple, at 24 years of age, embarked on the journey, retired at 28. They're now about 32 years of age. Next slide. This particular couple is fascinating. This, this couple is uh, from the East Coast, Drew and Stephanie Tidwell. He was a PK, preacher's kid. He was raised around the dinner table with how to live on less and love it more. There's not enough money to go around, you know, and et cetera, et cetera, kind of the way I was raised. She was raised in a family of people that came from a blue-collar background that became financially independent in this type of industry. 
And so she wanted her dad to interview him over a period of time to figure him out. And she was raised basically by her parents being at home, homeschooling her. And so he would go golfing with uh, Danny Snipes, his name was, every week. And his big, his big complaint was, why do we have to golf on the weekdays? Because i got to get off of work. Why can't we do it on a weekend? She says, you need to ask him why. And he'll show you how. And so lo and behold, they got involved, retired at 23 years of age. They're about 31 today. And they're going to be keynote speakers at one of our coming events in Minnesota in July. Next slide, please. Uh, here's a couple of crazy sisters. This is uh, Lindsay Fluger, Carly Fluger, that are college graduates. Uh, let's see, two years ago, Carly graduated from WSU, and her sister's graduating May 5th. Can't wait to get out. And uh, one of them spent 60000 the older sister, and this, this younger one, hundred grand just on education. One, and you come out of college, a lot, 70% of kids, they don't know what they're going to do. They go, gosh, I mean, I, I still don't know what I want to do. Well, she met us, this uh, Carly, when she was just started her first job as a waitress coming out of a four-year degree, and April and I began to coach and mentor her, and she has made great strides, she and her sister together in business. The guy next to them, that, that handsome-looking dude next to them, his name is Cameron Allen. He's a body fitness builder guy from Anchorage, Alaska, and he's got a great team of people he's developing. Most of them are single women. I think they're really interested in him, if you understand what I mean. And uh, he's doing great. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so this next slide, quick story. This gentleman was raised in the Bahamas out of poverty, and she was raised in the uh, Dominican Republic. Uh, and they didn't know each other. He built this business, met her at a meeting. She got kind of excited about the idea. His dream was to build business, the business so his mother could buy have a car. And so he saved up, made a lot of money at this, bought her a car, bought her a house, and then bought out her job and said, Mom, you're not going to have to work anymore except let's work together in our business. And his wife, his future wife, when he met her, he said, what, what do you think about this idea? She said, you know, I think it's a good idea because I, I need more security and freedom to spend more time with my daughter. I don't have any flexibility. I work too hard. He says, what do you do? I'm a cardiovascular surgeon. He says, what's that? I cut open chest. You don't want me to have to do that to you, but I cut open chest, replace arteries and valves. He goes, oh, okay, let's stay away from that. So today, they both have created great success in this, and she works 90 days as a surgeon, not 90 days in a row, but 93 months, and then three months off, three months on, three months off. Pretty cool schedule. Next slide, please. This is a young couple that come from a farming background, Newcastle, Colorado. This young man is 6'9", so I'm always looking up to him. And uh, his, uh, him and his bride got a couple of kids, raised in the farm. The par her parents have a huge sheep operation, two or 3,000 sheep, yet they don't have any freedom. They are literally handcuffed by that kind of industry. And so they realize we want more freedom, more flexibility. So there's some rising stars. Next slide. This is a wonderful couple, both colonels in the, in the Air Force. She flies the largest airplane known to mankind, the C-5. It can hold 20 tanks, I believe, and uh, he's a logistics guy. Their, their thought was, we're going to do 20 years in the military. What are we going to do when we get out, and how are we going to have enough money to really live the lifestyle we want to live? They met some very cool people that coached them in this industry, and they've risen up through this, and they're both retiring from the military right now, and just a wonderful East Coast couple, Dave and Sharon Coley. Next slide, please. This is a very, very cool couple. I just met them at the Millionaires Convention. They're about 27, 28 years of age. And uh, they pulled out a check just to show me one of their, they get all these year-end type checks, pulled out a check for $82,250. That was just one of their year-end bonuses for running their part-time business. Unbelievable couple. So the Nobles. So uh, Patrick and Amber Nolan. Next slide, please. This last slide is probably the most powerful one that I've seen. The last people to be recognized in San Diego, the last people to be recognized, came across that stage. They walked very briskly. They walked very proudly. And they got in front of that microphone and with European accents told their story. Scientists, PhD scientists that have worked all over the world for different scientific institutions. At 70 years of age, they realize we don't have enough money to 
to live the way we want to live. And we're only 70. Most people go, hey, I'm getting near the end. Their thought is, hey, we'll live to 100, 110. And Ten years later, they became, instead of six of these teams, six of these outlets, they had 15. They're 80 years of age today. They're eight. I can't even tell you on the scale, the Richter scale, of what that means financially other than uh, they're doing okay. <laughs> All right? So uh, the next slide, please, uh, Director, so I can see where we're at. Keep going. Next slide. Director, please. Next slide. Thank you. Okay, just to close up now. Um, in the month of April and early May, we're going to have uh, what are called spring leadership events that are impact events, transformational impact events that teach and train people on these principles, the how, the what, the why, put it all together in a package, and we're going to have one in Seattle on the 20th, 20th and 21st. We're going to have one in Minnesota on April 6th and 7th, and one in Newcastle, Colorado, uh, 11th and, and 12th of the month of May. So I encourage you, whoever invited you here tonight, to find out how you can become a part of that, spend a great weekend, a fun, vibrant weekend, and explore this further. Next slide, please, <coughs> Director. Slide again, please, Director. Now, right here, this is probably one of the most brilliant human beings I've ever met in my life. She came in by satellite, Zoom cast spotlight satellite out of Cabo last night and spoke to the folks in the event center we were at last night. And this is April. This is a person that I have the honor to be married to, best friend, business partner, mom, wife, etc. And she's a coach of women. And she at one time was the president of Women of Washington, one of the most powerful women's organization in the entire United States of America. Started from humble beginnings and through the transformational process of books and associating and listening and being around good coaches and great coaches, she became one herself. So she'll be somebody you're going to want to see at the spring conference events that are going to take place. Absolutely unbelievable woman. And I would say to you, just get a little taste of her, if you've, if you've never, what she's like, I would say go to this, April Humphrey, don't mind my doctor's handwriting, dot com. April, that's a P there, by the way. H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y, aprilhumphrey.com. Read her bio and listen to a two-minute video about her. Next slide, please, Director. Thank you, Director. Next slide, please, Director. <laughs> there we go. We're, we're going good. A little, little uh, L.A. probably doesn't have very good Wi-Fi or something down here, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Um, these are action steps. This is just a summary. So just real quick. Number one, I encourage you, if money were no object, write down whatever your goals or dreams would be in the next one year, two years, five years. If money were no object, time were no object, do what you want to do whenever you want to do. I encourage you to think about that. Write it out. If I was to give you a check, a blank check every month for 20 grand, every month for 12 months, could you take a legal pad and write out what you do with that 20 grand on top of your regular income every month? Challenge you to do it. I've seen people do it. It absolutely opens up the possibilities in your mind. Number two, fill out a Frank's list. So if you go to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, your regular contacts, and then just, oh, I knew Johnny in grade school. I knew Billy and Susie and Paul and David in high school. And, oh, my fraternity. All the people you've met and known over the years from previous education, previous jobs, previous associations, churches, or whatever it happens to be, places of worship, how big a list could you make? I challenge you to write out 100 names and then let that list talk to you. Out of that 100 names, about 20 people on that list will actually, you'll, you'll, you can almost hear them talking to you saying, call me, let's get together, let's have coffee, let's talk about the future, let's talk about what's going on. And then secure a place as an IBO. What that means is you got to ask. you got to say, you know what, would you consider me partnering with you? Do you feel like I'm a quality enough person or do I qualify? Am I somebody that you would consider inviting me into your business system. So secure a place as an IBO. That's about the price of a pair of shoes, not the kind of shoes I'm wearing, but just regular shoes, okay? Apply to the ILD 
coaching school. What does that mean? Well, if you go to college, you apply there, don't you? And then they're more than happy to take $80,000 out of your, in my case, my daughter was about 300000 Pepperdine, you know, the, the country club there on the beach in Malibu, bless her heart. Um, so the ILD coaching school. You know, how am I going to afford to do that, David? Well, let me ask you a question. How many times have you gone to the store on a daily basis where you got change coming back? You gave them five bucks, you got back 92 cents. You know, you, you gave them 10 bucks, you got back $8.22 and, and, uh, or whatever. The loose change in your pocket on a daily basis will fund your education in ILD. It's, it'll be absolutely remarkable for you. Most everything that you do when you learn in ILD is information that's shared freely with you without somebody saying, write me a check for $1,000 for me to coach you uh, next month or come to my mastermind clinic and uh, it's $10,000 each. I only have room for 15 and you, you go, you, you spent like this one podcast I heard the other day, this lady, she was wanting to become a coach. So she spent $27,000 going to a mastermind training meeting. And I'm going, okay, <laughs> um, true story. So uh, I'm missing the uh, list here, Brandon. I'm sorry. There we go. Um, okay, so go apply to the coaching school. Number five, clear your calendar and attend the next ILD business briefing and conference, i.e. the one coming up in, in Seattle or Minneapolis or, or Denver. And then number six, review the revenue sharing app. Take a look at it. Play with it. Review the written and audiovisual materials that are available for you in what's called an information, uh, business information pack that I have sitting over here. And review the information and get back and have a skull session where you sit down and ask a lot of questions, discuss the strategy, the ideas, and flesh this out. Very important that you do that. And, uh, the more people that you meet that are successfully doing this, the more excited you're going to get and the more you're going to see the possibility. So with that being said, my pleasure being with you tonight. Hope I made sense. Look forward to seeing you on the flip, flip side of success. Thank you very much. There we go. My God. Are we off? Woo! Well, I started late, so I was, what, about an hour? Oh, yeah, 55 minutes. Are you getting out of here?